most of my subscribers and I have very few have an inquisitive scientific mind and therefore the videos that you find on my channel are to cater to their needs. One such question that my intelligent subscribers keep asking me is about DHT and most of the time I fail to answer the question. The etiopathogenesis of balding, the causation of balding based on the theory that has glorified the role of DHT in male pattern baldness, androgenic alopecia. The DHT paradox till today has defied explanation. And if you watch this video, even those who are not subscribers, people who do not have a scientific mind will understand what the DHT paradox is. So that was a very simplistic explanation of what the DHT paradox is. So now about the theory. Scientific research thrives on an environment where skepticism is celebrated, curiosity is nurtured and the pursuit of truth is held paramount. Through inquiry, researchers uncover anomalies, inconsistencies, inadequacies within current paradigms, thus fostering innovation within scientific disciplines of which hair loss is one thereby enriching the scientific landscape by propelling scientific discourse forward. So is the case with male pattern baldness in which the jury is still out. Jury is still out to know the real cause of baldness. The current theory of the etiopathogenesis of male pattern baldness is riddled with inadequacies and cannot in its present form withstand the rigors of scientific scrutiny. And now we come to DHT paradox and what it means. As far as the causation of male pattern baldness goes and according to current knowledge, currently held beliefs in the scientific community, it is safe to claim that 5-alpha reductase activity increases in those who are susceptible to androgenic alopecia. Number two, DHT, the active form of the male hormone testosterone increases in the scalp. There is a spike in the number of DHT receptors in the hair follicles when you're balding. And fourthly, preventing the conversion of testosterone into DHT by inhibiting 5-alpha reductase impedes the progression of baldness. So these are the four principles which are widely accepted as the causation, the cornerstones of male pattern baldness today. According to currently understood concepts, DHT is the culprit, the trash hormone that causes male pattern baldness by miniaturizing follicles and soon making them disappear. But there is a paradox here that stares at the face of an inquisitive person who has a scientific bent of mind and most of my subscribers, though I have very few, are intelligent enough to point out this paradox. DHT is the most potent metabolite of testosterone. Though androgens which comprise testosterone and DHT are naturally meant to convert vellus hair into terminal hair, the paradox lies in the fact that in androgenic alopecia, the reverse is true. The paradox is that how one circulating hormone has such opposite effects on a single tissue depending upon where this tissue is located, depending upon the body site. This biological paradox makes the understanding of male pattern baldness, androgenic alopecia, not only intriguing but also suspect. In the realm of androgenic alopecia, there are certain assertions widely deemed as the truth, akin to time-honored truths in a complex puzzle. Now picture this, the 5-alpha reductase enzyme diligently converting testosterone into its most potent form DHT amplifies its activity on the barren battleground of balding scalps. As if DHT weren't content with simply making an appearance, it boldly escalates its presence in this follicular environment, flexing its molecular muscles in a display of dominance, in a display of dominance over the follicles. But wait, there is more intrigue in this follicular saga. Not content with merely lingering around, DHT garners a legion of receptors on these balding battlegrounds, establishing a formidable foothold that further entrenches its presence, a veritable arms race with DHT fortifying its positions while follicles teeter on the brink of miniaturization. Yet amidst this follicular fracas, a paradox emerges. How could this most potent iteration of testosterone, this herald of androgenic vigor, be implicated in the diminishment of the follicular fortitude? 
This is a biological conundrum that has left the most keen researchers scratching their heads in wonderment. The dichotomy of thought as far as androgen independent and androgen dependent follicles are concerned. A narrative that attempts to untangle the web of androgenic influence across the balding scalp terrain. Distinctions are drawn between follicles that bend to the whims of androgens and those that remain steadfast in their indifference. But this thought process, this form of thinking is but just a mirage when subjected to scientific scrutiny. For you see, the crux of the matter lies not only in the follicle's sensitivity to androgen, but rather in the relentless march of DHT as it lays siege to these follicular citadels. It's not about the sensitivity, but about sheer force of presence, a relentless onslaught that leaves follicles gasping for survival. In the annals of scientific discourse, one voice rises above this fray, this din, attempting to shed light on this follicular enigma. And in a subsequent lecture, I'm going to cover the hypothesis that Kaufman has proposed. A link to this is in the description below. So to end this talk, the last word about the causation of androgenic alopecia has not yet been said. The androgen sensitive, androgen insensitive theory of androgen alopecia raises more questions than it answers. A lot of questions are left in the wake of this theory. So keep asking your doctor questions. Get in thinking about hair loss, hair loss treatment, about hair transplant. In the quest for understanding, no question that you ask your doctor is too bold. No inquiry too audacious. For it is only through relentless inquiry that the mysteries of androgenic alopecia may be laid bare in the near future, revealing the intricate dance of our hormones and our follicles that shape the landscape of hair loss. So thank you for watching again. If you have any question about this talk, if you have any question about hair loss, hair loss treatment for men and women, about hair transplant in India, or any other question about hair loss, do let me know. I'll be happy to answer. Put a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you shortly. Have a nice day and God bless you.